Okay, so what determines the length of time it takes before someone recovers from a viral illness? Um, that, to a great extent, depends on the host factors, the way that the individual was before they became infected with the acute uh, viral infection. And that often has to do with what kind of dormant infections they have in their body. Now, we should clarify before we go further that there are some people who actually start out very healthy, but they get a very large inoculum of say COVID-19 and they end up in the ICU and with a big pneumonia and then half of their lungs are scarred for the rest of their lives. Or people who have heart problems and they lose some of the function of their heart during the acute illness. These are people who may recover fully from the viral infection, but because they recover with these scars on their um, vital organs, they will continue to have some kind of dysfunction. Um, this is not what we're talking about at this moment. Conditions uh, like long COVID and conditions uh, like MECFS that are due to, vi to infections uh, are always associated with some kind of abnormality that indicates a low-grade activity of those complicating dormant infections that have become uh, awakened as a result of the trigger. And many people with MECFS will tell you that their problem started with an acute viral illness that never quite resolved. And then every few weeks to every few months, they go through another episode that looks just like the original um, viral episode. So when you examine people who have ongoing problems with these viral infections or these atypical bacterial infections or yeast type infections or parasitic infections, you can identify abnormal cytokine signatures. Cytokines are messages that are exchanged between white blood cells. And you can also look at the antibodies that are produced against these dormant infections and you will document that up. Oh, not only are we now documenting antibodies that are for people who have had these infections and have resolved them, but now we also have IgM antibodies that are positive, IgA antibodies that are positive, and these are antibodies that are generated only during acute and active episodes, either the first episode or a reactivation of something like Epstein-Barr or CMV or Candida 20 years after an individual was originally infected. And it's usually these ongoing um, problems inside the individual that, uh, that lead to long-term manifestation. Another possibility that should be considered is that the primary infection has never resolved. And in some people, if COVID ends up acting as a retrovirus and can translate itself back into R from RNA into DNA and figure out a way to stay in your body, then that can continue to uh, produce symptoms long-term and lead to chronic fatigue.